Hello there and welcome. It's Bob Proctor back again. Now, you know, in the last video that we made here together, you know, I went through how the conscious mind works, how the subconscious and how the body is an expression of the mind. And as you go through that, if you go through it a few times, you're going to see, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Now, I want you to think of this for a moment. When you impress an idea upon your subconscious mind, that alters the vibration of this instrument we call our body. See, our body is a molecular structure, really what it is. It's a mass of energy in a very high speed of vibration. Now, we invented a word to describe our conscious awareness of vibration, and that word is feeling. If you ask a person, you know, how are you today? They'll, they'll say, well, I'm feeling fine, or I don't feel that good, I feel great. You never hear a person say, oh, I'm consciously aware of being emotionally involved with a negative idea, so therefore I've moved into a negative vibration. But that's exactly what happens. So, you see, as we start to understand this, and we become aware that we're not feeling too good, we can change it. Now, it takes a little training, but you can do it. We are really in charge of how we feel. Now, we let other people upset us, but we don't have to let other people upset us. We don't need to react to them. We can respond. We can listen to what they're saying, and they say, well, I, you're entitled to your opinion, but that's just not what I'm like. And we can hold our own idea of ourselves. You see, it's important that we grasp how the mind works and that we understand the relationship of the body to the mind and the mind to the body. Now, it's our results that we want to change. Now, our results could be in our physical body. It may want to be, you may want to cast off a few pounds. You may want to put on a couple of pounds. You may want to uh, have a little higher energy. See, all the energy there ever was or ever will be is 100% evenly present in all places at the same time. Everything's energy. You know, you'll hear people say, where does he get all the energy? Where does she get all the, nobody gets energy. Everybody releases energy. Desire is the triggering mechanism that whoo, lets the energy flow. Now, let's go back and have a quick review. Here you've got the little stick person here. There you've got the conscious mind. And remember, you have the sensory factors hooked up to the conscious mind. And then you have the subconscious mind, and then you have the body. Now, the conscious mind has the ability to choose thoughts. Those thoughts turn into pictures. We turn the pictures over to the subconscious mind, and then the subconscious mind expresses the action. All right? Now, what is the problem? Remember we said the subconscious mind had no ability to reject? We said the subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. How did we arrive on the scene? I'll tell you, when you arrived on the scene, you did not have any conscious faculties developed. The sensory factors weren't even developed. This is how you arrived. That's called the little life. That's the baby. No conscious mind. So there's the subconscious mind. It's wide open. You can put anything in it. You see, your subconscious mind is programmed genetically. That's why we look like our relatives. It's built right into the genes at birth. But then we're programmed environmentally. Carl Mendiger from the Mendiger Foundation in Topeka one time said, environment is more important than heredity. Why do you think you speak the language you speak? You speak that language because you are surrounded by people that speak that language and your little life. And the language just went right into the subconscious mind. If you grew up in a home that was bilingual, you learned both languages. I had an associate over in Kuala Lumpur, had a little boy. He spoke four languages at four years of age. And you'd look at that and you'd say, my gosh, no, no. The baby was programmed. Why do you like the food you like? It's programming. That's right. Now, let's stop and think about the environment we were raised in. Here's the baby, and look at the ideas and the thoughts and the concepts that are going on around that baby are going right into that baby's subconscious mind. Now, through repetition, over and over and over again, and remember, the baby's getting it all day, every day, all week, every week, all month, every month, all year, and this goes on for four or five years. And the baby reaches the age of four or five where they can start to think that baby's programmed. That baby is programmed to think like the people it had been surrounded by. If the people that surrounded that baby had gone right through school, the baby will probably grow up and go right through school. If the people that were surrounding that baby always lived in hard times, never had any money, always in debt, 
That's probably how that baby's going to grow up. Now, this is bizarre, but this is how it happens. It's how it happens for me. I was raised during a depression. We didn't have any money. There was always talk about no money. You should be satisfied with what you've got. Well, that's not true. You should never be satisfied with what you've got. You should be happy with what you've got. Dissatisfaction is actually a creative state. So here we have now a baby that has been programmed. Now, let's take and think for a moment. What happens when that baby starts to think for itself? Now, think of this. The paradigm controls the vibration. The vibration controls the action which produces the result. Now, here we go. Here you got the baby with the paradigm and the conscious faculties have developed. They have the ability to think. There's a power flowing into them. What are they going to think? They're going to think thoughts that are in harmony with that paradigm. That's right. We've been raised to believe you go to work to earn money. Do you know that working is the very worst way to earn money? That's right. You should go to work for satisfaction, not for money. You provide service for money. You can earn money while you're sleeping. In fact, we have programs where we teach people to actually earn more money while they're sleeping than they'll ever need to use while they're awake. You say, well, that's a pipe dream. No, no. That's a paradigm that causes you to think that's a pipe dream. There's people doing that that are nowhere near as bright as you. But here we are now. We've got the person. They've been programmed in their little life genetically and environmentally. That paradigm is nothing but a multitude of habits. A habit is an idea that's been programmed into the subconscious mind over and over and over again. So here we have now a baby that has been programmed. Now, let's take and think for a moment. What happens when that baby starts to think for itself? Now think of this. The paradigm controls the vibration. The vibration controls the action which produces the result. Now here we go. Here you got the baby with the paradigm and the conscious faculties have developed. They have the ability to think. There's a power flowing into them. What are they going to think? They're going to think thoughts that are in harmony with that paradigm. That's right. We've been raised to believe you go to work to earn money. Do you know that working is the very worst way to earn money? That's right. You should go to work for satisfaction, not for money. You provide service for money. You can earn money while you're sleeping. In fact, we have programs where we teach people to actually earn more money while they're sleeping than they'll ever need to use while they're awake. You say, well, that's a pipe dream. No, no. That's a paradigm that causes you to think that's a pipe dream. There's people doing that that are nowhere near as bright as you. But here we are now. We've got the person. They've been programmed in their little life genetically and environmentally. That paradigm is nothing but a multitude of habits. A habit is an idea that's been programmed into the subconscious mind over and over and over again. Now, the paradigm is literally controlling the behavior. Consciously, you can think of one thing, but subconsciously, the other idea will be controlling you. See, we can sit down and we can read these self-help books. We can listen to the recordings. And we say, yeah, well, I can do that. That makes sense. That's logical. But then we can't do it. Why? Now, think of this for a moment. I want you to imagine that you're going to accept an idea right now to turn your annual income to a monthly income. You say, well, I'd like that. But will you do it? Probably not. Your paradigm will stop you. See, your paradigm literally controls the results. Now, let's think of how the paradigm was formed. The paradigm was formed through repetition, the ideas being planted in your subconscious mind. Now, understand your paradigm dictates your logic. Your paradigm controls how you utilize your time. Your paradigm controls your perception of situations. Your paradigm controls your effectiveness. Your paradigm controls the amount of money you earn. If you want to change your life, you must change your paradigm. You see, to most people, it's illogical that they could take and turn their annual income to a monthly income. But if you follow our teachings, we'll show you exactly how to do that. We'll show you how to accomplish anything you want to accomplish, because what we're focused on is showing you how to change the paradigm. When the paradigm's change, your life changes. It's a beautiful concept. It's an absolutely phenomenal concept. Now you know why you're getting the results you're getting. It has nothing to do with your intellect. 
Your intellect, you can figure out how to do things. But that doesn't mean you're going to do them. You'll hear people say, I believe that, but their behavior would indicate they've never even heard of it. Why? We believe something on a conscious level. On a subconscious level, the paradigm believes something else. There's a word called praxis. Praxis is the integration of belief with behavior. We've got to take the beliefs that we have consciously, that we determine by thinking, and plant them in the place of the old belief. See, I used to believe that I couldn't do anything better than I was doing. I felt fortunate that I was on the fire department. The idea of building a company that operated all around the world, furthest thing from my mind. But you know something? As I changed my paradigm, my whole world changed. That's what we do. That's what it's all about. You've got to change your paradigm if you want to change your life. Now, you can study all you want. If you don't gain an understanding how to alter that program, and that's what the paradigm is, it's a program. It's a multitude of concepts that are fixed in your subconscious mind that literally control your behavior. It's a beautiful concept to understand. It's a terrible one if you don't understand it because it literally controls your life. Why do you think most people go right through their life and keep getting the same results year after year after year? Well, it's just the way it is, and they don't know. We should be taught this in school, but we're not. How is the paradigm formed? Through the repetition of information. How's the paradigm changed? Repetition of information. Now, let's suppose you're having a difficult time with money. You find that you've got more going out than coming in. You've got to change your concept about money. How do you do that? Through the repetition of an idea. That's where affirmation comes in. I'll give you one I've been using for years. I am so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. I am so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. You don't just say that once or twice. You've got to repeat that maybe a thousand times a day, every day for maybe 90 days. And you'll start to change your whole concept about money. Wealthy people all have multiple sources of income. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened to me. I drove around with a battery-operated record player and a long playing record. And I played it over and over again every day for probably a couple of years. This was so totally illogical. It was behavior. Everybody thought I was losing it. And I'm reading the same book every day, Think and Grow Rich. As a matter of fact, I'm still reading the same book. And it was the repetition of Earl Nightingale's information and the book that changed the paradigm. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand what I was doing, but I did it. Do you know, I had a man come up to me in the Waldorf Hotel in New York, the Waldorf Astoria, at the end of a three-day program. And he said, Bob, I really want to thank you for what you've just given to me. He said, for the first time in my life, I have understood how I accomplished what I did. I said, what did you do? He said, I won the gold medal in the decathlon in the Olympics in Melbourne, Australia in 1957. That's right. Milt Campbell. And he said, I never understood how he did it. He said, the next time you run a seminar, I want to bring my boys. And he did. Milt and I became great friends. In fact, Milt has a key to our house. He can come stay there anytime he wants. I live in Toronto. He's in New Jersey. But here was the top athlete in the world, a very best athlete in the world. He didn't understand how he got there. Most people that are very accomplished cannot tell you why they are. That's why they are. They've rewritten the program. They changed the paradigm. They might not have understood how they did it, but they did it. That's what our company is all about. We teach people how to change paradigms. I want to thank you for watching this. But I'm going to ask you to share it with other people. Share it with them. Say, come and watch this. Start a rapport. Build a rapport with people. You know, It's a great way to live. And this is great information to understand. Thanks for listening. This is Bob Proctor. I enjoy sharing it with you.